Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing with stencils. Now, not the whole stencil, just pieces and parts of it. And you'll see how by just selecting out part of the design, you can create a completely different look. I'm gonna be using the wrought iron stencils that I designed for over at Stencil Girl Products as I'm playing in my art journal. And you will see that I don't start on a blank page. And the reason for that is anytime I've got excess paint, and that happens to me quite a bit, I don't wanna waste any of it. So if I've put too much out on the palette or there's too much on the brush, what I will do is just clean it off on a random art journal page. And the layers will just build up and then at some point I come along like now and I decide to add some pattern to it. Now I will tell you the plan when I started this one was to just put a little touch of pattern here and a little touch there and then go on. But spoiler alert, yeah, I kind of put a lot of pattern on this one. When I look at a stencil, there are two things that I see. One, the entire design, and stencils are great to use in their entirety. That full design, like right here on the page, I could put this stencil on here, it'd be a great focal image. And I also see the parts, the pieces, the partials, because those can give you a completely different look. As I'm using this stencil, you'll see the basic technique that I'm gonna use over and over again throughout this video. And that is, I'm not gonna cover the entire stencil in paint. I'm just gonna do parts of it. I'm gonna intentionally leave some areas not fully covered. And I'm not gonna go all the way down this stencil. I'm just gonna stop part way and sort of let it fade off there. And you can use any amount of the design this way. On that one, I used a fair amount of what was on that stencil. But here on this one, I'm gonna use just one, a little part of it. Having that flexibility, that freedom to pick the pieces and parts that you wanna use out of a design is one of the reasons that I continually love to play with stencils because you can always get something different out of them. Now, my intention when I started this page was to simply get a couple of layers on here. I wasn't gonna do much. Really, I was gonna stop about here. Now, what great reason did I have for not sticking with the plan? What is it that made me decide to go in a different direction? I was just having fun. I was enjoying myself and I wanted to keep going. It's as simple as that. It's not that I really have a grand plan of where this is gonna go. I've just got some paint there, I've got some stencils, and I'm just gonna play. I'm using cosmetic sponges to apply the paint because they offer some versatility. You see, if I wanna do a smaller area, one of the things that I can do is just grab a smaller cosmetic sponge. Now these cosmetic sponges do not come in multiple sizes. It's one size, it's a cosmetic wedge sponge from the hardware store, hardware store, drug store. No, you can't find these in a hardware store. And the one that I like right now the most are the ones from Walgreens. Um, I like the denseness of the foam. And again, that's what's happening right now. Who knows as formulations and suppliers change of things, but currently Walgreens has the ones that have just a really nice firm sponge to them. But back to the size of the cosmetic sponges. Now, if I say that they come in just one size, but then I'm looking for a smaller one, well, that's because when I'm done with a cosmetic sponge and the paint dries on the end of it, I simply cut that little dried end off and then I've got a fresh, clean end ready to go. But just like with a pencil, every time you sharpen it, it gets a little bit shorter. The same thing is true for these cosmetic sponges. So every time I cut a little bit of the bottom off, they become a little bit smaller and I save all of them, so that's why I end up with a variety of sizes. So when I need a little one, I just grab one that's been used a bunch and had a lot cut off of it, or if I want a larger area, I get a fresh one, because that'll have the biggest area to sponge with. But this way, I don't have to worry about cleaning out the sponges, and I can get multiple uses out of one sponge. The layers are beginning to build up on this page, and the great scientific formula that I'm using to determine where to put the next pattern is, hey, will it fit there? Yep, it's really that complex. Because what I'm doing here is I'm building up a background. I'm putting layers on there, and if there happens to be a layer that I don't love, then I'm simply gonna put something on top of it. There are so many things in this world that are worthy of deep thought, intense thought, and lots and lots of mental energy. Creating a background in my art journal to me is not one of them. So this is not a lot of thinking. It's simply grabbing what I've got nearby, which are the wrought iron stencils, and just layering up a whole bunch of pattern on here. As I'm doing the stenciling on here, some of these look very crisp and other ones do not. 
And there are three factors that I play around with to change the look. So if I want it to be crisp, I can make it do that. And if I want it to have a much looser look, I can do that using the same paint and cosmetic sponges there. Now, the three big factors that I pay attention to is the kind of paint that I'm using. All the paint that you're seeing over there, those are thicker paints or a heavy body. Thicker paints are less likely to run underneath a stencil. The other thing is the amount of paint on the cosmetic sponge. If I've got a lot of paint on there, it's going to ooze underneath the stencil. It's not going to give me those crisp lines. If I want a crisp line like what I got with those X's there, that is about using less paint on that cosmetic sponge. And then the third thing that I really look at is how I'm pouncing that sponge. First is, how much force am I using? If I'm pushing down really hard, then that's going to push the paint under the stencil, which means I'm not going to get a crisp line. So going gently helps you get that crisp line. The other thing is pouncing it in an up and down motion. If you're doing it gently in an up and down motion, you are on the path to getting those crisp, wonderful lines. If you're applying the paint in a side to side motion, or you're using a lot of force when you're doing it, those are the things that will give you more of that loose look where some of the paint runs underneath the stencil a little bit. You get more of the imperfect kind of vibe to it. Earlier on this page, I took this exact same stencil and I went through the middle of it, but I went through a very narrow strip of it. This time, I'm going to do a wider section of it. So I'm going to get the circles and then some of the lines below it. By going a little bit farther down below the circles than I did the first time, it's going to give me a different look than what I had the first time. So many possibilities and so many options. This was the very first stencil I put on the page, and I went down the middle and I took a lot of it. But this time, I'm just doing a little bit on the edge. And so that gives it a different look than if I used a lot of the middle section. Again, you have lots of options, lots of possibilities with these. Now here's something you might not have known, and that is if you put yellow on top of white, basically yellow on top of a light color, it's really hard to see the pattern that's there. And not only did I do it once, but I did it twice. <laughs> now the challenge really begins for me because I'm still having fun playing. I don't want to stop but I'm running out of places where I can tuck pattern. So I'm going to start doing some things on top of other things. I'm going to be squeezing stuff in places because I just don't want to stop. Whenever I share a video of creating a background like this, one of the questions that usually ends up in the comments somewhere is, so how are you going to finish this? What are you going to do next to the page? Well, as of right now, I have no idea what's coming next on this page. And that's because of the way that I play around in my art journal. Whenever I've got a few minutes to play, I simply open to a page in one of my journals, see which one kind of calls to me, and I add a layer onto it. Like with this page, I already had color on there from cleaning off paint brushes and using up leftover paint. And my initial plan was to just put one or two layers, little bits on here, and I clearly uh, threw that out the window and went to completely cover the whole thing in pattern. And then once I'm done playing today, this page will patiently wait for me to come back to it when I'm ready. And so whether it will be this week or next month or next year, this art journal page will be waiting for me when I'm ready to play on it again. Because art journal pages, well, they're not gallons of milk. They don't have an expiration date and they don't go bad. Working in my art journal this way allows me to squeeze play in around all those mature adult responsibilities and things that, well, you know, I kind of got to do. And speaking of squeezing things in, I think I've just about squeezed in as much as I can onto this page. So I'm almost done with this layer. Now, what you've seen in this video using stencils, is this the only thing you can do with them? Is this the only way to use them? Absolutely not. There are a world of possibilities, so many ways you can play with them. And if you're looking for ideas, if you want to go deeper in understanding your stencils, how to use them with different art supplies, then check out my workshop, The Joy of Stenciling. Well, as I'm putting the last little bit of pattern here and there to finish up this layer, I want to say thank you. Thank you for stopping by and sharing your time with me. I'm so glad that you're here. If you've been enjoying this video, if you've been having fun, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you know somebody that would enjoy stenciling, share this video with them so they can join in the fun too. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.